Hello and welcome to the Nexus Gaming Series. I am Bludgeon coming to you with yet another Division A matchup. Tonight is the final match of the regular season for both of these teams who are fighting for their playoff spot. Not in the sense of making it to the playoffs. Both of these teams have already secured their spot in the top eight and therefore the playoffs. What they are fighting for is their seed going into playoffs, which will determine which team they face in the first round. So looking at the Division A standings here, we're focused on number one, Innovation, and Illusion Esports. Number one in Innovation currently sitting in sixth place with 16 league points. Illusion Esports currently sitting in seventh place with 14 points. To remind you of the way the scoring works here in a two-game match, if you can get a 2-0 victory, you get three points. If you go one and one, you get one point. And of course, if you don't get any wins, you get zero points. So... In order for Illusion Esports to jump up a spot to 6th place, they need to score a domination victory here. In other words, they need to win both of these games tonight. If they go 1-1, one one, it's not enough to change the standings. For number 1 in Innovation, therefore, all they need to do to keep their spot in 6th is to win one of these games tonight. They don't need to win both, they just need to win one. Now, looking at the points here, you might say, well... If number one in innovation can get the domination victory, that will give them three points, tying them with two plus two, who is currently sitting in fifth. Uh, but there are various tiebreaker rules to prevent that mattering. Uh, so the most important one here is the fact that two plus two has I more domination there. victories this season uh, than Illusion Esports. That would break the tie. So two plus two, having six two O's, number one in innovation in this scenario would only have five. So it's not enough and number one in innovation would stay in sixth place in that case. Uh, just a disclaimer, some of these scores are a little bit out of date. So for example, last night, actually Reality Esports managed to get the 2-0 versus ODG to get themselves that final playoff spot. Uh, so that's that. All right, enough about the standings. Let's take this graphic down. Now that we've set the stage for this match, let's take a look at what is actually happening. So, the coin flip determined the first map ban and pick for game number one. Number one in innovation was selected as the first choice. They banned Curse Hollow. Illusion Esports followed by banning Warhead Junction. And as we can see, the map for game number one, chosen by number one in innovation, is going to be Tomb of the Spider Queen. Map number two will be Towers of Doom. So, taking a look at the bans and picks that have already been happening while I've been yammering away, we see Garrosh banned out first by number one in Innovation, Chogall being banned out uh, by Illusion Esports, and we can take a look at all these picks. First, I want to say that Garrosh ban, uh, you know, Garrosh has been really interesting in the league so far. Usually first banned, and... Uh, sometimes not. The weird thing is when he's not first banned, he often somehow lasts all the way to the end of the draft and gets last picked and uh, ends up just wrecking people. So Girash has been a real force in the league. The powerful um, displacement that he provides, being able to bring people in with Groundbreaker and then throw them over turrets into the enemy team uh, is really devastating and has been very hard for teams to deal with. So it's a really smart thing to ban out uh, when the other team has first pick which Illusion does in this case. Uh, Chogall banned out. I've seen that quite often recently. Um, team is just really not wanting to have to put up with the game warping power that that hero provides. All right, ETC, first pick. Not much of a shocker. Great all-around tank. Options of global mobility with stage dive or super team fight prowess with the more popular, usually, um, Mosh Pit, which I expect to be the pick, especially on Tomb of the Spider Queen, which is a smaller map. Vala, Oriel, Tassadar already being picked up by Illusion. So they are setting up this kind of super powerful carry composition. All of their eggs are going to be going into the Vala basket here with Oriel and Tassadar to support. Now it's possible they might pick up something else, uh, an alternative carry to go with that. We'll have to see what they do, but uh, a, lot of, a lot of attention and trust uh, going to go into this Vala as well as the two supports to keep her alive. Stukov, on the other side of things, might be able to interfere a little bit with that plan with that lurking arm, AoE silence, that he can put out from usually a safe distance 
um, that might make it somewhat more difficult for Oriel and Tassadar to uh, to be able to get their key abilities off in time to save their friend. So it's going to be all about how uh, Stukov ends up being played here. All right, we see Greymane and Chromie being picked up by number one in Innovation. Uh, this will be my first chance, I think, to see that awesome new Halloween Greymane skin in action. So definitely looking forward to that. Chromie, pretty cool. I don't often see Chromie played in these competitive matches, but uh, excited to see what she can do with that long-range damage. So number one in Innovation has a pretty diversified damage setup so far. They've got Greymane for melee. Uh, assassination and Chromie for long range poke kills as well as uh, setting up CCs with the time traps Illusion Esports taking their time here uh, looks like they banned out the Ana, so that makes a lot of sense Ana is really able to screw around with healing with her um, grenade ability that reduces all healing by 100% so when you're setting up a composition to support the heck out of one of your carries you really really don't want to have healing prevented in that case I imagine that's the logic uh, of banning the Ana there alright so the last two picks ended up being Anubarak and Sonya so Nubarak, an extremely strong frontline hero, uh, able to CC like crazy, a lot of peel, a lot of mobility, a lot of tankiness, um, and so that really does a good job in protecting that Vala, and Sonya to provide more frontline uh, disruption as well, and a bit of another additional threat to prevent everything from just being all on Vala's shoulders. So a, quite a strong team composition, I would say, has been constructed by Illusion Esports here. Uh, the question is going to be how well can they execute it and how well can number one in innovation uh, disrupt it. So far, I do think they have some tools to deal with it. The Stukov is going to help, uh, but we're going to see what they can do with this last pick. And it's going to be Malthale. Okay, really interesting. So uh, a triple damage composition from number one in innovation as opposed to the sort of two you know, double 1.5 damage composition, you might want to say, uh, from Illusion. Malthale's going to be, you know, poking people out, persistent kind of health damage, as well as, you know, some pretty massive uh, unstoppable burst when he goes in with the Tormented Souls. I'm really excited to see how this plays out, because as you can see, the team compositions are really different in terms of what they're going to be trying to do in this game. Uh, Illusion looking to stick together a lot with that kind of composition they're not going to be want to they're not going to want to split up too too much although the sonia can certainly operate on her own when uh necessary on the other hand um number one in innovation not so committed to the 5v5 situation uh they're probably more comfortable splitting things up given that they don't have that sort of double support situation uh I, but i mean You've got to be scared of the damage that's going to be coming out of there. Greymane, Malthale, Chromie, if things line up properly. I mean, just imagine this. Imagine ETC goes in, gets a mosh pit on a few people. The amount of damage that's going to be followed up is going to be very difficult to deal with. All right, game number one is coming at you right now. So we'll switch the scenery here and we'll get into it. All right, number one in innovation, we have... Chrissy37 playing ETC, Light God on Greymane, Black Bandits playing Chromie, Kairos on Malthiel, and Amon on Stukov. On the other side of the map, Illusion Esports, we've got Kozer playing Anubarak, Defender on Oriel, Medieval playing Vala, Unaverted on Tassadar, and the new member of the team, QWERTY, playing Sonya. Recent roster swap for Illusion Esports, bringing in QWERTY as a new melee flex player and we're gonna see how he does in the limelight on Sonya to start things out Chromie already trying to stack up those sand blasts we'll see how far she can do uh, with that in this game <laughs> Smithel in the chat saying I'm a much better caster than the scrub who is supposed to be doing that but uh, while all this is happening nice stasis wow Tassadar 
just barely getting out of that alive. Chrissy, 37, gonna be the first one to die. Amon following very closely thereafter. That's a quick two kills by Illusion Esports, starting out this match on the right foot. Remember, Illusion has to get a 2-0 in order to jump in the standings above number one in innovation. They cannot afford to lose either one of these games, so they're starting things off just right. All right, in the chat, let me know what you think of these team cops. Who do you think is going to win game number one? Will it be number one in innovation or will it be Illusion Esports? Cordy, solo lane against Kairos down in the bottom lane as two members of Illusion come down to get the gank. Can Kairos get out of this alive? Having to go around kind of the wrong side of the turrets, but uh, makes it alive, so that's uh, a failed gank but uh, no harm done everyone going back towards the mid lane now Kozer going pretty deep Chrissy power sliding across getting out of the way lurking arm kind of uh, in the middle of nowhere there doesn't get a whole lot done both teams trying to pick up these uh, little gems as they can Light God sitting on 13. Wants to be careful not to get ganked. That is for sure. Cordy in a little bit of trouble. Gets out of the way. Kozer putting some CC down to get things rolling there. People are silenced. People are walking away. It's just kind of a, a fruitless skirmish at the moment. Neither team uh, in any real danger of losing any lives for now. Cairo's getting a gem turn in there. Just putting 10 in the bank. Making sure he doesn't lose them later. Defender... Getting focus gets away. Defender going to take a sip of that uh, strangely shiny water, although it's a heck of a lot better than the radioactive stuff that goes on on some other maps. <laughs> nice job by Tassadar there, just uh, averting that chromie damage at just the right time. Kozer... Fairly confident to just get forward there on the Anubarak. Not scared of what uh, number one in innovation is putting down. Chromie getting some pretty nice stacks on that Sandblast so far. Um, makes sense on a map like this where everyone's kind of very close together at all times. You're going to be able to just get those hits uh, fairly frequently here. Some attention going down onto Malthiel. Cairo's getting a little bit low, but uh, no harm done. Going in actually to get some more damage onto Kozer. Kairos now chasing QWERTY out of the fight, and it's yet another disengage. Illusion Esports currently sitting on enough gems to get a turn in, if they can actually get the chance to uh, to get that turn in happening. Light God sitting on 25 gems, gets a nice stun. Defender getting a nice uh, lash against that wall, but it's not going to be followed up. And Light God walks away. Gems pretty well fairly distributed so far across Illusion Esports. Kozer currently sitting on the most with 19. But being that it's a Anubarak, well, you know what? I was just going to say it's hard to kill the Anubarak, but number one in innovation pulls it off, and that is the largest amount of gems on Illusion being dropped on the ground. Looks like the team members managed to recover most of them. Medieval now sitting on 20. Uh, currently number one in innovation, also sitting on enough gems for a turn-in as well. So... Uh, Black Bandit's going to be the one to put two in the bank, but Light God about to get 31 deposited there. Really? Oh my goodness. The the time trap setup really just wrecked Tassadar there. He got stuck and just totally ruined as soon as he came out of that stasis. Great job there by Chromie and the rest of the team to capitalize on that CC. All right, so what can number one in innovation do with this uh, map advantage they have at the moment. Chromi, uh, or Tacitor rather, coming right back up. Looks like they did not quite get a chance to turn in gems, but both teams sitting on enough for a turn in. And Medieval and QWERTY trying to get one in. QWERTY does manage to get a couple turned in, but Medieval is the one who's sitting on a lot of gems and just not able to get that done before number one in innovation has come down. Taking a quick look at the talents, uh, the one that I find interesting right now is Vala. Most of the time I see Vala is going for Hungry Air Bolt. Forget that, Sonya is about to get dead, and that is one dead barbarianess. And so that's going to give number one in innovation a chance to turn in, and they don't. 
because actually Illusion snuck in the turn in up top while uh, <laughs> number one in Innovation was not uh, paying attention or trying to get their own turn in bottom. So Red Web Weaver is going to be coming out first on this map. Chromie now just reaching uh, her heroic ability, going for the Slowing Sands. Going for the area control team fight presence rather than the sort of gank ability provided by the uh, rewind ultimate, whatever that one is called. Time trap this time not leading to anything as defender comes out and does not get hit by a thing. Spider down bottom being escorted by Qwerty in mid, just being left alone. That's going to be some nice uh, structures going down there. Most of Illusion deciding to accompany that top lane spider uh, and most of I'm just going to call them Innovation right now. It's too long to call them number one in Innovation. We'll just have to remember that's what they're called, and thankfully it says that right at the top of your screen. So three members of Innovation sitting up top here. Going to finally get that Web Weaver down. One in mid, still hanging on. Uh, not going to last too much longer, but that is some nice damage onto that fort. And, you know, I didn't think they were going to get it. And I guess they're not. Chrissy getting a nice power slide onto Cordy, who gets silenced. And, whoa, almost walks away alive, but uh, ends up, you know, dying while trying to walk away alive. I guess you can't really walk away dead. Only, uh, what's that guy's name? Skeleton King Leoric. He's the only one that can do that. All right. So both teams still sitting on tons of gems. Light God about to turn in 41. And it looks like he is going to get away with it as his team does a great job zoning for him. So that's going to be blue web weavers coming up right on the heels of the red ones. That's a quick one, two uh, response there. Chromie about to complete the Sandblast quest. Both teams now sitting on level 10. Quick rundown. We've got Mosh Pit. Go for the throat. Slowing Sands already talked about. Tormented Souls. Massive Shove. Cocoon. Crystal Aegis. Reign of Vengeance. Force Wall. And Leap. There's the Force Wall in action right now. Looks like everyone is going to be sticking around in this mid lane. Both for the offense and defense. And that's a lot of quick damage going on to those structures. These things are not going to last too long. Uh, QWERTY decided to go down bottom and just take out that bottom web weaver while they could. Meanwhile, while I was looking down there, Tassadar got wrecked. Sonya leaps in, Reign of Vengeance follows up, and that is ETC going down. The tank now gone for Innovation. But it is a 4v4 in the map as Tassadar was destroyed just prior to that. Doing a good job getting kills onto Tassadar, who is usually a pretty difficult hero to kill, thanks to not just the shield, but also the phase shift, more importantly, making him invulnerable and invisible. But that's two times they've managed to get him so far. Innovation heading down bottom, but the Web Weavers have been cleared out. All right, so after all of that, uh, the Web Weaver phase for both sides, a couple of kills for both sides. Innovation actually taking the lead on kills and a very slight lead on XP. Things are still fairly even. Uh, no forts have yet been destroyed, although there's some damage on mostly all of them at this point. Both tanks using their mobility there. Chrissy trying to engage, unaverted, just getting, uh, or sorry, Kozer getting out of the way. And that's another Web Weaver phase already for Innovation. So they got off to a little bit of a rocky start with uh, Illusion getting some nice kills to start things off and getting that first Web Weaver phase, but things have sort of switched here. Innovation has had the momentum advantage for the last few minutes. We'll see if they can keep it up. Medieval sitting on 40 gems really does not want to die here. So, uh, has to be careful, but also has to be up there to do anything for this team, since it's a build largely focused around that Vala's damage. Uh, has gone for the multi-shot build, rather than the Hungering Arrow, which has been pretty popular. Alright, so the first fort of the game finally goes down, and it's going to be that mid-fort. Uh, of Illusions. Web Weaver up in the top is probably going to take out that one next as it doesn't look like Illusion Esports is going to get there in time to uh, defend. Innovation doing a pretty good job keeping Illusion bottled up here in this mid lane. So that's two forts gone and it's going to be a 
third, I think, that Web Weaver is going to do it with the help of those minions. So really nice swing of uh, events there for innovation, getting three-fourths all in one Web Weaver phase. Looks like they're even going to get the front wall protecting this keep. Uh, all right, finally the Web Weavers are down. Illusion now really needs to refocus and get back into this game. Uh, the game is certainly not over. Anything can happen in Heroes of the Storm. One bad team fight at a crucial part of the game can swing things around. Currently, both teams sitting on an even talent here, uh, not counting Chromie. But Illusion really needs to find a time to turn in. They're sitting on 103 gems for the team, only 55 to make those web weavers come down. But uh, I can't imagine Innovation is going to give them too much of an opportunity to pull that off. And it looks like they, in fact, may take this chance to just get that boss. All right, so they're going to get the, the boss. And Illusion is finally going to turn in all of these gems they're sitting on, or at least all the ones that they're allowed to turn in. So it's going to be Red Web Weaver's blue boss at the same time. How's it going to turn out? We're about to find out. All right, all five members of Illusion going up to deal with that boss, which it means that their web weavers are kind of just going to be wasted in a way because what you really want to do is be able to escort and pressure alongside your web weavers to make sure you get some value out of them. Uh, but instead what's happening is the web weavers are valuable in the sense that they're forcing innovation to deal with them. All right, Koza's going to try to get a team fight going here. He's right in the middle of a bunch of people. Cocoon uh, is activated, so that's somebody just kind of stuck right there now being surrounded by the team that's probably going to lead to a kill nice oriole stun immediately once uh that cocoon came down so that's a kill onto the mouth 5v4 on the map top web weaver is still alive for the moment uh, i've got to imagine they're gonna be able to get this top for it but perhaps not a whole lot beyond that as the web weavers have been cleared out everywhere else chrissy uh looking to engage this 4v5 interrupted out of the power slide by kozer Light God going in on that Anubrak and then going back out again. <laughs> Tassadar using that Force Wall to just stop Chrissy from, in, uh, from touching new teammate QWERTY. Illusion still has enough gems for another Web Weaver turn in if they can manage to do it. Uh, but they're certainly on the back foot here. All outer structures are still up for innovation, whereas they are all gone for Illusion Esports force wall in the middle of the field just to prevent anyone from getting in there and messing with that mercenary capture, which ends up resetting. Uh, but I do think that Illusion's going to be able to get it. Quick reminder of the stakes for this game. These teams are fighting for sixth place. Currently, Innovation is sitting at number six, and Illusion is sitting in spot number seven. This is relevant because it, it changes which team these teams will face in the playoffs. So first seed goes against eighth seed, second seed goes against seventh seed, third seed goes against sixth seed. So basically they're fighting for the opportunity to, to have a slightly easier uh, first round of playoffs, or at least on paper, easier first round in the playoffs. Because of the current score, number one in innovation only needs to win one of the games in this series in order to secure themselves that sixth place position. Illusion Esports must win both. They need a domination in order to jump past innovation in the standings. So this first game is going to tell us a lot about what could happen. Nice force wall blocks Chrissy 37 right in the middle of the enemy team, but uh, not too concerned is the ETC as uh, really they couldn't do anything to him. All right, we've got Blue Mercenaries pushing down that mid lane, forcing Illusion Esports to go down and handle that situation. Innovation only 15 gem turn-ins away from another uh, set of Web Weavers. They do not currently have that many gems on the team, though. Meanwhile, Illusion sitting on lots more gems. Stasis has to go down already. Unaverted, stuck in the Lurking Arm Silence, unable to get out and killed. Kozer also getting killed. Cocoon 
is activated. They get a kill onto Anubarak, though. That's already two dead. Tassadar and Nubarak out of the picture for Illusion Esports. Quirty running around the backside, just having to escape. Chrissy gets another power slide onto Defender, who dies next. So that's three killed for Illusion Esports. All five members of Innovation already up on the map. They do have enough gems for a turn in, and it looks like they're going to go for it right now. This is putting Illusion in a really difficult position. They are down to just their keeps, and one of those keeps has no defenses against it. So they're going to be web weavers everywhere, and I imagine that uh, Innovation is going to push with them. Light God also grabbing that bottom mercenary camp just in the nick of time. So this is going to be an extra strong push from Innovation. Both teams are at least sitting on an even talent tier, so that... Uh, that that's something Illusion can try to hang their hat on here. Kozer just hanging out in that vision, hoping to get uh, some kind of surprise, but or at least just keeping an eye on things. All right, looks like everything is going to be focused in the top lane. Quirty and Kozer are going to try to get a nice flank onto Amon, uh, but the heals go down. The uh, bio kill switch is activated, and Amon walks away no problem. Now Kozer is kind of stuck L all the way on the other side of the fight here. ETC goes deep into the enemy, gets stunned up next to the keep. Uh, Reign of Vengeance does go down. Everyone trying to get that ETC killed, but it hasn't happened just yet. Light God, meanwhile, going right into the back lines onto Unaverted, but that doesn't work. And it looks like it might just be a disengage. Chrissy37 has left the game. Uh, I'm going to have to put a pause down there. All right, so very unfortunate that in the middle of this very important team fight, we have a disconnection as uh, <laughs> Chrissy disconnects here. Unaverted saying it's part of the strat. ETC bot is known to be really strong. So uh, unfortunate. But while we're sitting here, we might as well take a look at the state of the game. So right now, Illusion Esports is fighting for their lives here. They, uh, they're on the back foot. Web Weavers are pushing in on top, mid, and bottom keep. They've put everything into this defense here, and they've managed to do all right. They've at least not died yet to the engage coming out of uh, number one in innovation. We saw we saw them try to go in there. ETC went straight in. Uh, Light God went right around the back of the keep, attacking the Tassadar. So they've kept themselves alive, which is nice, and they're trying to get something happening now. Uh, in this team fight, but you know we can see Light God is kind of low, Amon is kind of low, but ETC, Black Bandits, Kairos, they're still full health. Uh, it's going to be pretty difficult for Illusion uh, to do much here. We can see, looking at the heroics, Anubrax Cocoon has been used, Reign of Vengeance has been used, Leap has been used. Force Wall is going to be coming up pretty soon. Uh, the Stasis from Oriel is still up. ETC's uh, Mosh Pit is going to be coming back up in three seconds, so that is definitely crucial. Um, Malathiel has used the Tormented Souls, and Stukov went with the, uh, the pushing massive shove thing, so that comes up pretty quickly anyway. So what I imagine we're going to see here is uh, number one in innovation just kind of disengaging until that mosh pit comes up and then i think we're going to see a quick power slide mosh pit and perhaps the end of the game if they can pull it off um defender and kozer both sitting in the mouth the tormented souls here we can see that was just activated so it's tough it's tough uh taking a look at the talents you can see chromie has uh, you know well completed that sandblast quest so that was finished quite a while ago for her uh, Storm talent, she went with Anderhal Anomaly. So extra time traps and all time traps finish at once. So we can see the time traps have been really useful in this game. It's been a tool to kill Tassadar uh, at least a couple of times. Uh, kind of getting around his ability to just get out of there with the uh, phase shift. All right. 
So again, we're in this pause because unfortunately, a member of number one in innovation, uh, the ETC player, Chrissy, did disconnect. The word is internet issues. Internet is being restarted, so we should be back into this game fairly shortly. While we're here, uh, if anyone has any comments in the chat, let me know how you think this game is going. Also, don't be shy to click that follow button up top if you haven't already. And, uh, geez, man. I really wish this pause would go away and we could get this game back on track. But this is the reality we're living in. I mean, it's amazing that internet games work at all if you think about how this is working. I mean... I'm pressing a button on a keyboard and it's somehow sending some kind of crazy pulse signal into like the wall and that's going underground and then it's going above ground and then it's going into the air and it's going around the world and it's being bounced around about, you know, satellites and relay systems and somehow we're able to play a game throwing abilities at each other with split second accuracy and decision making. I mean, there's no good reason that should work at all. So the fact that we're in this pause and we have to deal with this kind of crap, it sucks. But I suppose, you know, we shouldn't miss the forest for the trees and we should just appreciate that this works at all. So that's your message of positivity coming to you from Bludgeon TV for today. I'll type a message in the chat here while we're waiting. Why not? I am going to uh, put us back into the starting soon screen here, and I'll be right back as soon as this game comes back on track. Don't go anywhere. All right, the game is back on track, and we're in the middle of this crazy team fight. Illusion Esports backing away from the Tormented Souls, and that is a clean disengage. So, the good news for Illusion Esports here is they did not lose that top keep, which I really thought they were going to. So, they're rotating now down, defending bottom and mid. Now, unfortunately for them, they did happen to lose their bottom keep while all that was happening, and that is largely thanks to that mercenary camp. Uh, that Greymane managed to pick up just as the Web Weavers were spawning. And you can see those Siege Giants are still moving in. Illusion Esports worried about that boss being taken. They've come forward to try to perhaps catch Innovation on the boss. Um, but nothing really happened there. Unaverted getting rooted inside that Silence field, but nothing much comes of it. Force Wall goes down. Kiros, Kairos, rather, uh, just walks away. Core starting to lose some shields. Cordy coming down to deal with this situation shouldn't be a problem, but it is distracting attention. Level 20 is going to be coming up in just a couple of seconds for number one in innovation. There's a lot of damage already down onto Defender. This is a big problem for Illusion Esports. Oriel having to self uh, stasis, somehow still alive. All right, Mosh Pit having to be used, or uh, ends up being used rather, on just kind of one person, which is Cordy. So not the best value out of that really strong ETC alt there, but hey, not too bad. All right, so that was very close to disaster for Illusion there as they kind of got caught out, but they managed to work as a team. The double support comp coming into play there, keeping everyone alive, allowing them to back out. Illusion now is going to be looking to stall this out if they can in order to catch up to the level 20, which has already been achieved by number one in innovation. And look at what they're doing here. They're baiting the boss. They're saying, look, we're getting the boss. Come fight us. We're getting the boss. Come fight us. 
Illusion is not coming to fight them, instead taking the opportunity to get those red web weavers, and now they're heading up north towards the boss pit. So a bit, perhaps, of a misplay by Innovation, but Tassadar gets chunked so quickly at the start of that fight, having to immediately use all the defensive cooldowns. Cocoon has already been activated. All members of Illusion still alive. Black Bandit getting picked off by the Reign of Vengeance. Kozer, though, extremely low. That's a dead Anubarak. The tank now gone for Illusion Esports. It's a 4v4 on the map, but... Force Wall is going to allow the disengage. Medieval trying to get something done on that Vala, giving chase. Remember, the Red Web Weavers are pushing, and the boss was not captured by number one in Innovation. Illusion patiently escorting that Web Weaver in, getting whatever damage they can, but not going too far for that team fight. They know everything is on the line here. They cannot overcommit, but at the same time, they can't be too scared. They're keeping Innovation up top here. QWERTY goes in, getting some nice damage onto Chris. Very low. Medieval going in now on the Vala. Even the Kairos getting very low. ETC is dead. QWERTY chasing down Kairos, and that is a dead Malthale now. 5v2 on the map for Illusion Esports. Is this the comeback that they needed? Level 20 is uh, picked up here. Malthale just respawns, so it's uh, 5v4 very soon. This Chromie is coming up next. All right, a lot of a lot of action here. Nice rain of vengeance followed up by the Quirty leap, and that is a kill onto Malthiel. He came back and he went straight back to the death zone. This is going to be a mid keep picked up by Illusion Esports. They have picked up the level twenty. The web weavers, uh, I believe, are gone at this point. But that is an extremely nice swing in the game for Illusion Esports, keeping their hopes alive in this match. Going for Light God, and it looks like they're going to get the kill. The Force Wall forces him up around the wrong way, but they're going to have to go through a lot of keep shots to track him down here. There's another Force Wall. However, he got healed up fairly nicely by Amon, and I don't know. They might be tunneling too hard on this. They do get the kill. Medieval gets healed up, and Illusion is non-stop here. They are relentless, pushing this advantage they've managed to get for themselves. They were on the back foot for so long, just defending, just holding on, biding their time, and they it's a crucial... Uh, team fights, some crucial kills, and a really nice play there getting the Web Weavers. They have turned this game around. That turned out to be an extremely costly mistake for number one in Innovation. Going up to try to bait that boss, it was a cute idea, but what they forgot is that Illusion was sitting on tons of gems, and they almost have enough for yet another turn in, but instead what's happening, Illusion is now going for the boss. I think they're going to get it. Number one in Innovation is in no position to contest this so that's going to be a quick boss pickup i think for illusion esports innovation kind of starting to show up here but i don't know if they're going to be able to do anything so no that's a boss pickup or well they're stalling it out a little bit how long can they hold on to that are they just going to let it sit there this is extremely risky here i don't know i mean they're trying to get gem turn-ins all right, unaverted going up to pick up the boss. The timing, obviously, if you can do it optimally, it makes sense to wait on those kinds of captures. It's just a little bit risky here. All right, this team fight could determine the game. Kozer already getting pretty low. Quirty and uh, the other member there, silenced and stunned by the mosh pit. Kozer having to walk away, got Kairos in that cocoon, but nothing really came of it. Quirty uh, getting quite low now. Everyone on Illusion is very low. Anubarak has now been killed. Defender may follow up oh my goodness that's a nice shield there to stop that but defender now goes down qwerty medieval unaverted all very low sonia is dead and i think this might just be the end of the game here unless the boss can do this for them well, let's see maybe they can maybe they can stall this out medieval trying to get healed up unaverted in the back using the force wall to push people off really nice volley damage put out by our multi-shot damage put out by vala Oh my gosh, look at this, the boss and the minions pushing down the blue core. Red core being attacked by Light God, Kairos, and Christy. But I don't think they're going to do it in time, and that is an extremely exciting win from Illusion Esports. Right down to the wire, it turned out that whatever they were doing with that boss, hey, it worked out for them. Boss gets the core. Really nice defense by Illusion Esports. Tassadar doing his best, using the force wall to just keep people off the core for those crucial few seconds. Vala putting really nice damage pressure, making people too scared to just focus the core entirely. And in the end, that boss managed to kill the enemy core before Innovation could take down the one by Illusion. All right.
super exciting game number one. And that keeps uh, the hopes for sixth place alive for Illusion. But don't forget, they're still alive for Innovation as well. All right, don't go anywhere. We're going to be coming up with game number two after a short break. And this game will determine once and for all who will go into playoff in sixth place seed and who will go in in seventh place seed. Don't touch that dial. We will be right back with more Nexus Gaming Series. Welcome back to Bludgeon TV. You are watching the Nexus Gaming Series. This is the end of the Season 2 regular season for Division A. This is the final match between, uh, well, this is the final match for both of these teams, number one in Innovation and Illusion Esports. This is game number two of this match, which will determine which team gets the sixth place seed going into playoffs and which team will end up in seventh. To be clear, both teams will make the playoffs. There's no question about that. The only question is who will they face in the first round of playoffs. So the winner of this match will play against the third place seed, whereas the loser will end up playing for uh, against the second place seed in that first round. So maybe you get a slightly easier matchup if you win this game. Uh... Illusion Esports took game number one. And they needed to win both games in order to get enough points to leapfrog Innovation in the standings. Innovation, however, only needs to win one. So it's totally up for grabs. This game settles everything. If Innovation wins, they're sixth. If Illusion wins, 
they're sixth. All right, so this map is taking place on Towers of Doom. This was the map selected by number one in innovation. Illusion uh, won on the map they chose, which was Tomb of the Spider Queen. So, uh, sorry, that is incorrect. Number one in innovation chose Tomb of the Spider Queen. Uh, Illusion Esports has chosen this map, Towers of Doom. All right, so looking at the bands and the picks, Garrosh was not banned this time and instead was first picked by number one in innovation. And as far as I've seen in this league, that is a very bad sign for Illusion Esports. Uh, Garrosh has been just deadly in these games. Um, I've just seen so many people caught off guard getting a groundbreaker at the wrong time. And just, that's it. Once you get caught, you get flipped, you get killed. Wow. All right, so we saw Vala was banned against Illusion. I think that's an interesting choice because we saw last game that they centered their composition all around the Vala, putting supports in there to help her out. Um, Illusion is a team who does like to play Vala, that is for sure. ETC and Stukov being the first picks over there for Illusion. Uh, fair enough. Both strong picks. Doesn't tell us all that much about the composition. Uh, Kael'thas, though, is an interesting grab for uh, number one in Innovation. Rhaegar, so far their only support. We'll see if they end up going for another one. Uh, and the same for Illusion. Both teams last game... Uh, sorry, Illusion last game went for a double support composition, whereas Innovation did not. Um, we'll see if they think that was part of the problem which I don't think it was. The last game really could have gone either way. It was a very swingy game. Um, most of the time, it was actually in favor of number one in innovation, and then kind of an iffy call towards the end didn't work out and swung things the other way. All right, Stukov Uther is going to be the team up over on Illusion's side, so they are going for the double support, also taking Greymane. So just looking at the team comps, three out of the four champions currently selected by Illusion... Uh, Esports were used by number one innovation last time. Just getting a question about skin bands. Yeah, so there are certain skins uh, and mounts that are banned for competitive play in Nexus Gaming Series, and this is mostly due to the visual readability uh, of those skins. So, for example, Muradin Muradin is banned. That's the kind of, like, uh, mecha Muradin. And he's banned because the animation on his stun is a bit different, and it's harder to read. There's less of a wind-up. So, for things like that, some of these skins do get banned. Candy Cane Muradin, however, totally legal all right so the team composition for number one in innovation has been locked in garrosh kalefoss Rhaegar, malthale murden once again going for the single support here versus the double support um they've got the malthale again this time and murden as well as kalefoss so they have a fair amount of cc Next to combo spot. up with the garrosh uh groundbreaker pull they've got kalefoss stun uh, Muradin stun, Rhaegar uh, slow. So you do not want to get flipped into that team. And the last pick, Falstad, over on the side of Illusion. So that is interesting. You know, for a long time in the league, we saw a heavy focus on global champions. Dehaka, Falstad, Brightwing, um, ETC even using global mobility there. Even um, Abathur as a sort of a global hero. But lately, that seems to have fallen out of favor to a degree, so I'm interested to see the Falstad coming out here. Uh, very useful, obviously, on a map like Towers of Doom, where objectives are spawning kind of all over the place. Falstad can be where he needs to be whenever he needs to be there, assuming the cooldown is up. And there's no real accompanying uh, global presence on the opposite side. So Falstad will be able to soak XP in a lane, while the rest of his team stalls at a team fight, only flying in when absolutely necessary. So that may be able to give Illusion the upper hand in this match. Chat, 
Let me know what you think. Is it going to be Illusion for the 2-0, or is Innovation going to pull this out, making it 1-1, keeping their sixth place position? Let me know. All right, game one has begun. Over in the blue side, we have number one in Innovation, Chrissy37 on that deadly garage. Light God playing Malthiel, second game in a row. Kairos on Muradin, Black Bandits playing Kael'thas, and Amon wolfing it up on Rhaegar. Over on the right side, we've got Illusion Five, Esports. Four, Kozer playing three, ETC. Defender on Stukov, pustuling it up. Medieval clawing people with Greymane. Quirty going to be flying around on Falstad and unaverted on Uther, lining up the U's. All right. All 10 members have decided to start things out in the mid lane. Kairos getting into that bush first, so currently having control of things. Let's take a look at the quests here. All right. Well, we've got a convection pick. We've got a convection pick, folks. Let's see whether Black Bandits can pull this off. The last Kael'thas I casted who took that talent, uh, they did win a game with it, but the talent itself did not go so well. Power Slide going down onto Kairos. Um, Muradin not super scared of getting some damage, so just walks away there. Chrissy 37 as well. No deadly Garrosh pulls just yet. All right, we see Falstad already using that flight to get back to the lane. I guess deciding to use that rather than the mana well cooldown. Black Bandit so far just has the singular stack on that convection. We'll definitely be keeping an eye on that as the game progresses. All right, first altar phase coming up very soon. 20 seconds to go on that. And Illusion trying to get that Pumpkin Man camp, but it's not going to work out as Kozer gets a lot of attention but manages to power slide himself to safety at the last second. Uh, but they're going to have to give up the Skeleton Men. Sorry, the Pumpkin Men. Pumpkin Head Men. They're going to be picked up by... Number one in innovation, so that's a nice uh, steal from them. Medieval trying to get the channel onto that bottom uh, altar, but it's not going to work. And Medieval now sort of stuck on the wrong side of things. Defender got a lot of damage pumped into him and does not walk away from that. Five stacks now onto the convection. Medieval having to try to run back to the base. Illusion currently a little bit on the run here, and it's a full level lead just about for number one in innovation. Also getting the early upper hand on those uh, altars and core health. But as we know, Towers of Doom is particularly notable for the comeback potential. You can have, you know, a couple of core health left, but if you can stabilize, turn things around, you can still win. Unaverted, looking to get a gank up top against Light God. There goes the Hammer of Justice and a lot of damage getting into Light God. He manages to pop around to the opposite side of the fight and has lived a bit longer than I thought he would, but ultimately, Malthale goes down into the ground. All right, so one for one on the kills at this point. That's going to give Falstad uh, some time to himself up top, get some nice structural damage, or perhaps go for the Pumpkin Head Man. Waiting to see some value out of this Garrosh. Nothing super exciting has happened just yet. No really notable uh, flips, but hey. The game is young. Alright, Cairo's on the wrong side of things, but it's Muradin, so there is no wrong side as far as he's concerned. Uh, nice stun into the Pyroblast, or sorry, the uh, Flame Strike. Chrissy, unstoppable, but about to be stopped in the only way that counts, and that is by being killed. Garrosh, dead. Can they get anybody else? Amon running away. Kairos running away. Black Bandits, at least, is going to be able to protect those stacks of convection as he does escape uh, death there. Sitting at 11 right now, only needs 9 more to lock that in. But sometimes that's the most dangerous time when you just need a couple of more. And maybe a step a little bit too far forward to try to get it. 
So far, no sign of that, though. Alright, bottom altar is available. Black Bandits tried to get the channel there. It didn't work. Kozer going deep with a power slide, getting pulled back and thrown by Chrissy. That's ETC in the back. Black Bandits trying to get the uh, channel while that was going on, but it's going to be ETC who goes down, and it looks like Bandits is going to be able to get that channel as another kill uh, is dealt to Illusion Esports. Fallstad deciding to stick around up top and just get some damage done and some XP up in that top lane. XP, very even so far. Light God finally shows up to push QWERTY away. Number one in Innovation taking this opportunity to grab their own little pumpkin head men as Illusion does the same on their side. No one yet has managed to grab those top ones. So, you know, good for them. They're just chilling. Oh, Light God taking a peek, making sure they're still there, I guess. Making sure no one's doing anything. Your world is upside down. A little bit of a lull in the action at the moment. Kairos and Unaverted just gonna slam each other. Alright, Unaverted now getting jumped by Kairos on Greymane and a lot of damage being dealt there. Flame Strike hitting Medieval. Living Bomb about to explode, but Medieval makes sure not to tag the members of his team with that. But a lot of follow-up, and there's a big Pyroblast followed up by the pull from Chrissy to ensure um, the kill onto Greymane. Convection stacks now sitting at 14. Only six more to go until that is permanent damage boost for that Kael'thas. There's another... Uh, I did manage to land it there, I guess. All right, so far nobody has managed to flip one of these bell towers over to their side, but Innovation doing their best now to get that going. Kozer doing a nice little power slide there, face-melting people kind of into the way. But Chrissy just throws ETC down the back, and even though it's ETC, it just won't save you. That's another kill. Now Falstad getting a nice kill onto Malthiel while that was happening. But uh, as you can see, that Garrosh is just so deadly. Yeah, you flip the tank, and normally you think, well, you don't want to flip the tank, but the follow-up damage was there, and they took that cow down and roasted him. Falstad activating the flight. Coming back down to this bottom lane, all five members are alive, but ETC is a little bit out of the way, although he has chosen stage dive. Landing right onto Black Bandits. Can they get to the kill? Can they reset the stacks? Looks like no. Ancestral Healing keeps Kairos up and running. Chrissy, 37, getting pretty low. Mighty Gust pushes everybody away. Light God, though, is in the middle of everybody with that Tormented Souls. Does not care, but the Souls uh, are just too tormented, and that is a death on to Malthiel. But look at that. That is a completed uh, convection for Black Bandits, who also gets the channel onto those towers. Really nice job by Black Bandits there. Uh, not only avoiding death, completing the quest, but managing to get the channel onto the altar as well. And that's thanks to his team doing a great job of screening for him. All right, still very even in this game as far as the normal metrics goes. We've got basically dead even XP. The kills are only five to four. Structures all still alive everywhere, but the difference so far has been the altars. Uh, number one in innovation has done a great job of just keeping illusion away from the altar, letting Black Bandits get that nice channel down. Let's talk talents. We haven't talked level 10 talents yet. We've got Warlord's Challenge, Tormented Souls, Avatar, Phoenix, Ancestral Healing, Stage Dive, Flailing Swipe, Cursed Bullet, Mighty Gust, and Divine Shield. Defender gets chunked by that Pyro... Sorry, Flame Strike. I get those names mixed up a lot. There is no Pyroblast in this game, although I did see it picked uh, recently by another team. So Illusion is doing a pretty good job leveraging their Falstad split pushing capabilities. Uh, not calling him down unless they really feel necessary. Chrissy missing that uh, pull there. Now getting a lot of damage focus. The Phoenix goes down in the middle and look at all of that AoE damage. Mighty Gust pushes people into a bit of an awkward position. ETC now stage diving down. Silence went down onto Chrissy and that is a dead Garrosh though. Defender is getting pretty low having to skirt around the edges of this team fight. Oh man, Flame Strike hits a couple of people and you can just see the health bar start to melt. Kairos now about to die as well. They get the stun and the kill. 
Two kills now for Illusion Esports and the altar coming up in 20 seconds. So Muradin will not be back in time for that team fight. This game could really still go both ways. The altars have risen. Activate them now. Like uh, taking this chance to grab that top pumpkin head man camp. And finally, an altar goes in the favor of Illusion Esports, so it's pretty close right now. Talking talents a bit, we see that uh, Defender has gone for the lurking arm build on Stukov. Growing infestation within my reach and lingering spines. Uh, man, number one in innovation really loves to invade this skeleton man camp, and ETC jumps down in the middle, causing chaos. Regar dead, that's the support finished off from number one in innovation. The silence from Stukov, we talked about that lurking arm build, and it worked wonders in that fight. All of number one in innovation just silenced, unable to do much as they get wiped out by Illusion Esports, a four for one team fight. Illusion taking the chance to finally invade. The other side's Pumpkinhead Man camp. And by the way, that's just what I'm calling them. I love calling them Pumpkinhead Men. I don't care if it's long. I don't care if it's longer than Mercenaries. They're Pumpkinhead Men. Trick or treat. All right. Structures finally getting flipped. We'll see if we can get a bell tower flipped in this game for once. Looks like it's going to happen. Illusion Esports pushing their advantage. Just take a look at the XP now. Two levels up for Illusion. They really have turned things around nicely there. The double global... Uh, has has served them well in this game. ETC and Falstad both going for it. Kozer got pulled in the wrong direction, but just power slides through the enemy team. Light God activates the Tormented Soul, but Defender just flailing swipes everybody right out of there. Nice disengage there from Illusion. Alters activating in 25 seconds. Going to be a triple altar phase this time. Top left, top right, and uh, just below mid. Impressive. Heroes. Heroes, I have opened a tunnel near our core that leads to the battleground center. Use it well. Both teams sticking together at this stage of the game. Nobody wants to get caught out. All right, Illusion's going to try to get this forward uh, altar, and it looks like they might be able to pull it off. Light God not going to go for it. So that's the top. Both top altars claimed by Illusion. Uh, that lower mid one was claimed by number one in innovation and just like that the core health is even 20 to 20. two level advantage still being maintained by illusion esports innovation managed to take back that bottom bell tower all that bluster and for what all right, pumpkin head men down bottom gonna push in but uh, illusion esports is here to take care of that meanwhile up in the top lane qwerty and koza are gonna push with their own pumpkin head men i think they might be able to well they're at least gonna no i was gonna say they're at least gonna get that mana well but light god has arrived i think just in time to stop that some action down around this boss perhaps koza and qwerty gonna have to back out there's all five members of number one in innovation are there, but nothing ends up coming of it. Pumpkin head men are stolen down in the bottom lane. Defender, Medieval, Unaverted, going to get out of there scot-free. Nice grab by them. This guy is cool, man. That is one cool-looking dude, got to say. All right, so number one in innovation here, uh, you know... They had a lot of momentum in the early part of this game, but Illusion has really been turning things around. We'll see how this progresses. Kairos getting stunned up by Unaverted, but whatever. Meridian just says, yeah, you can stun, I can stun too, buddy. All right, Alter's coming up left and right up in the top lane, and Illusion taking this opportunity to quickly grab this boss while Innovation was kind of sleeping there. Nice grab by them. Kairos now getting focused a little bit. Looks like it's going to be a team fight here. Cairo's down very low. Power slide goes in there, but it's going to be an ancestral healing to keep that Murden up and running. Phoenix is activated. Qwerty and Unaverted dealing with Light God in the back. Divine Shield goes down onto the Greymane. Power slide catches too. Silence 
Oh man, look at that silence on that Garrosh. He was stuck in that thing for so long. Flailing Swipe activated, pushing Light God out of the way, which is nice because that Tormented Souls was activated. So it turns out to be a one for zero as far as kills go in the favor of Illusion Esports and just in time for the altars, unaverted. Already grabbing the top right, Amon trying to channel the top left one, but it's not going to work as Lurking Arm pushes that away. Kairos getting chased by Medieval. Light God also very low. Nice stun lands, but that's going to be a cocktail to the face to kill Malthael. And that's going to be yet another altar going over to Illusion Esports, who is already at level 18. Illusion Esports looking at that sixth place spot. It's just so close they can almost taste it. They flip that top bell tower, and number one in innovation is definitely on the back foot in this game. They've got to collect themselves. They've got to get themselves together. They've got to figure out their strategy here. I certainly don't know what it is. But uh, we'll see if they do. Looks like they're going to try to get a pick here, but it's a 4v4. Everybody silence. ETC coming in on the stage dive. Look at the health bars melt. Phoenix is getting some nice damage onto Illusion Esports, uh, but it's not going to be enough. QWERTY flanking, getting the Mighty Gust, pushing him on, and Kairos. Kairos right in the wrong direction, and that is a dead Rhaegar. Kairos did activate uh, Avatar by the looks of things. Garrosh getting killed down in the bottom lane by QWERTY and Medieval. I think, uh, yeah, Kairos is going to be fine. But that's a 3-4-0. Remember, that fight was initiated by number one in Innovation. So a bit of a misjudgment there, perhaps. Uh, not counting on the global ability of ETC to just show up and land on their heads. All right. Look at the red on this map right now. We've got five red bell towers, a bunch of minions in the bottom lane. That's going to be another one flipped over down bottom. All six towers are going to be red, at least for a short amount of time, until uh, Innovation can reclaim this top one. Towers are active. Right now, it's a very dangerous situation uh, for Innovation. Look at this. Down to six core health. I think one of these altars will finish the game if they can pull it off soon. Deciding to grab those bottom pumpkin head men, which is at this point a very legitimate threat. As if they get across this line up here, that is going to be some core damage. Alright, what is Illusion up to? They're letting Kairos channel this altar. Or not. Cordy interrupts it. Kozer lands into the stage dive, gets immediately stunned. A lot of damage already going down onto ETC. That's the engage used by Kozer now. Phoenix in the middle of things, really kind of making it a bit awkward for Illusion Esports to maneuver around this team fight with Black Dan Bandits is very low in the back line. Chrissy, 137, also getting low. Ancestral Healing used on the Kale Thoughts to keep things up. Light God has activated Tormented Souls, but Garrosh dies. Rhaegar dies. Light God dies. This is going to be game over. Medieval chasing Kairos down. Uh, getting damaged pretty seriously by that Flame Strike, but that's game, set, and match as Illusion Esports takes down number one in innovation in a clean 2-0 match victory. Well fought by both teams. When I say clean, it certainly was not definitive, uh, but once Illusion got hold of that game, they never really let go. So, with that, number one in innovation will drop down to seventh. They will finish the regular season in seventh place. Illusion Esports will finish the season in sixth. And... Again, it just affects the seeding going in, so that's going to change who they fight the first round of playoffs, but that is a match well played by Illusion Esports. All right, that is going to do it for our broadcast tonight. Thank you to everyone for watching. Be sure to click follow if you enjoy the stream, and we will catch you next time on the Nexus Gaming Series. Actually, you know what? I think you're going to see if I can get an interview for you guys, so just hold on one second.
Hello. All right, so I've got Unaverted on the line here from the Victorious Illusion Esports. How are you feeling after that? Uh, pretty good. It's a pretty good showing. We just picked up Cordy and this is our first game with them. Yeah, so this is a new roster addition you've got for the team. Have you had much of a chance to practice? Yeah, as much as we could. Um, we've only really started playing with him about a week ago, but he fits in pretty well, so our chemistry's been pretty good. Nice. So tell me about uh, these games. Game one, you guys were on the back foot for a really long time in that Tomb of the Spider Queen. Can you tell me about the turning point there? Um, Yeah, Stukov and ETC, they set up a really strong early game. Um, their pre-level 10 is very strong, and their entire strategy is to pick off on rotates and create a lot of uh, opportunities with time traps but uh i think that even though that they got the bottom keep um they still gave us too much opportunity to come back and when after we started being able to take fights post 10 that were even that's when we start to come back into the game yeah, well, there was a really crucial moment towards the end where number one in innovation was kind of, I don't know if you know this, but they were baiting you at the boss for quite a while, just hanging out in the bushes, hoping you guys would check it. And that's when you decided to just go and turn in all your gems. And from then on, uh, things kind of really swung in your favor. Were you aware of what was going on up there? Yeah, we figured that they were baiting boss. I, even if they're doing it, they're still looking for an engage. And we kind of figured we'll give them boss. We'll trade our first turn. We have a second turn to follow. And uh, we'll just look to clear boss and then run two turns back to back. But I don't remember if it worked out that way. Yeah, basically what happened is you guys turned in all your gems, got the web weavers, and uh, I think then you went up and wiped them in the team fight as well. Yeah. All right, so game number two, uh, once again, it kind of seemed like they had the upper hand for the first few altar phases. Um and then suddenly they just couldn't even stand up to you guys. It seemed like they weren't taking into account the global ability of ETC to just show up and Falstead to just show up. Was that your feeling as well? Yeah, they tried to use Pale Horse from Malthel to compensate. Um, it's actually a really strong strategy, and the way that they were playing it was correct with uh, running Malthel to double soak quicker than Falstead can. And... The problem with that is they need to play Garrosh to play for picks. They can't play Garrosh passively, and so then if they're looking for picks constantly, anytime Malthal shows in that top lane, we can just have Felstar come down, and then it's a 5v4, and so it kind of puts them in a scenario where if they were syncing up their Garrosh and Malthal a little bit better so that when Malthal's mid, Garrosh is looking for picks, then we would have had a much tougher time, but um, we had quite a few opportunities to where Felsta collapses on their engage. What's your take on the double support situation? So in both these games, you guys went for double support. They went for single support. What's your feeling on that? Uh, if you go single support and do a double support, you need to get fights that favor you. And where, you, and those fights are where you're getting a pick very early. And that's really tough when basically every support, you're picking a bunch of heroes like ETC that have disengages. And so... The meta kind of lends itself to double sup, where it the all the disengages are there, which allows you to naturally win team fights if you're double sup, and single sup team has to find a way that they can kind of get an engage that instantly kills someone through all the disengage and double sup. All right, so let's look a bit forward. So you've you've clinched sixth place uh, in the standings. That's gonna put you up against the third seed in the playoffs. Uh, I'm not sure if it's been determined who that is yet, but uh, how are you guys feeling about going into playoffs? New member, uh, you finished the season strong. How do you feel? We're excited. Um, we feel like pretty much all our games have been winnable, and it's just been kind of dumb mistakes. And we're definitely putting in a lot of practice time and... I mean, we're obviously looking to do well, but uh, we'll see how it goes. All right. Well, thank you very much for the interview, Unaverted. Uh, that's going to do it for our broadcast tonight, so good luck with the rest 
of uh, Season 2 as you head into playoffs, and we're going to end the broadcast there. So for everyone watching, thanks very much, and we'll see you next time. Good night. Thank you.